welcome you this morning. For those of you in the house, welcome, welcome, welcome. Minister, Pastor DeBro, so glad to have you with us today. Amen. A pleasure. Come on, y'all. Give him a round of applause. Amen. Amen. He took time away from his pulpit to be with us this morning, and I welcome you, and I thank God for you. Amen. Amen. For all of you here, for all of the Saints family and friends, you've been coming faithfully, and God has just been so faithful to us. You realize that as we have been meeting together since this uh, uh, COVID-19, we were in the pocket lot for less than a month, and after that, we've been back in the building. We have not had a single case of COVID or anybody getting sick or any of those kind of things. We thank God for his blessing, his mercy, and his grace. Amen. And I just thank God for those who love the Lord because, you see, I believe when you're really in love with God, you want to be wherever the people of God are. You know, there. yes, you can watch online, and we thank you for watching us online. But I want to let you know we're saving a seat in the house for those of you who are still watching. It's time to come on out. For some of you, you know, you can go to the supermarket. You can go and pay your bills. You do all that. Well, what's wrong with coming back? to the house of God. I started not fussing this morning, but I want to let you know we are missing you. We need you. We're missing you. This morning, we're going to ask you if you're turning to Matthew chapter 4. That's where our reading will come from this morning, Matthew chapter 4. And when you have it, if you stand with us, I would appreciate it. For those of you who are watching at home, get your Bibles out. And if you don't have your Bible, I'm sure you have it on the phone. And if not, just, hey, just take paper and pencil and just follow us as we uh, share scriptures this morning, where we're going to be this morning. Matthew chapter 4 is going to be where we'll begin this morning. And for those of you here in the house, I'm going to let you know you look so beautiful. Amen. We thank God for each and every last one of you. Matthew chapter 4, beginning at verse 1, the scripture declares, Then was Jesus led of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward a hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. But he said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord. The devil take him to, up into the holy city and set him up on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, Cast down thyself, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee, concerning thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them all, and said unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thy serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Father, we thank you this morning for the sacred text that has been read in our hearing. And we ask you, Lord God, to take this Logos word and make it a rhema word unto each and every last one of us. Have this vessel of clay behind the cross, Lord Jesus, and you speak, Holy Spirit. You proclaim this message to your people. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Say, I'm going to let you know there will be times in your life that God will give you a word that will challenge you. There are times that God seeks to implement change in your life and mine. Now, when God gives information, he's given it for the purpose that it will bring revelation. And as a result of revelation, it will lead you to transformation. I believe that every time that God brings us to this place to where he shines his heart with us. Whenever he raises his message of revelation up to you and I, 
the devil begins to fight you and I at a different level. You see, when God wants to use you more, it looks like Satan finds his way on your trail. This morning, I'm going to need you to understand this morning. I'm going to talk to you about understanding the battle that you're in. You see, all of us are in a battle right now. Whether you know it or not, there is a battle taking place. Each and every last one of us are in a part of this battle. So when God begins to bring a revelation of what he desires to do in your life, there may be times that you would experience an unusual level of wickedness and things coming against you to hinder what God wants to do. Mm. You see, the magnitude of the move of God on your life and it has caused the devil to fight you and I at a different level. There are times that you and I are not even aware or cognizant of the fact that there's evil around us, but it seems that when God has given you a word of something he wants to do in your life, here comes the enemy. Now, Satan can't stop you. I need you to know. Satan can't stop God. So, and so since he cannot stop God, he comes to hinder you and I from fulfilling that which God is part of heart. You see, whenever God wants to lead you into something greater, the devil now wants to do something more to hinder that which God is doing. How is it that God has placed on your heart to, that he wants to begin to move in your life in such a way and seeming like when God reveals it to you, here come every kind of circumstance, predicament, and situation that comes to hinder you. You think that's just by accident? Well, no, it is not. You see, it's at this point, new levels, new devils. Mm -hmm. So when God wants to use you, the enemy begins to intensify his battle against you because he wants to hinder you because he does not want you to fulfill the plan out in your life. Now, I need you to know God's word is powerful. God's word is powerful. It's quick, sharp, sharper than a two-edged sword, Hebrews 4 and 12 declares. And that word cannot directly be stopped. But there are some times that God speaks to you and I, and it is conditional. You see, the word of God may be conditional in some circumstances, and the reason we have not reaped what God has said is because we have not met the condition. You ever read 2 Chronicles 7, 14? Yep. My people who are called by my name. What do we have to do? Humble ourselves, pray, seek his face, and turn from, his wicked, from our wicked ways. Then he says, then you will hear from heaven. Then I will forgive your sins, and then I will heal the land. Have you noticed the condition? You cannot get the healing of the land or the forgiveness of your sin if you do not humble yourself and repent and turn from your wicked ways. Too many saints of God are claiming the blessings of God, and we haven't met the condition. What about Matthew 5 and Matthew 5? And 5? You know, the scripture says, uh, if you will, but Reverend, let me say it this way, you will inherit the land if you are gentle, if you're humble, if you're meek. Is that what he says? The meek shall... Uh -huh. So in other words... Why are some of us fooling ourselves to think we can be judgmental, critical, or whatever, and think we're going to inherit what God's word is? You have to meet the condition. Well, you're in Matthew 5. Look at verse 10 then. The scripture declares that the kingdom of heaven will be yours if you are persecuted for righteousness. Is that what it says? Blessed are they who are persecuted for righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom. So if you are being persecuted, but your persecution is not because of righteousness, you can't ask God to reward you for that. He has looked at when we are persecuted for righteousness, then the kingdom of heaven will be ours. Too many saints are just, uh, we just are uh, just declaring some things, but we have not met the condition. Anybody remember Matthew 7 and 7? Ask, and it shall be given to you. See? And you shall find, not the door shall be open. So in other words, if you don't ask, if you don't seek, if you don't knock, the door will not be open to you. Why is it that we want God to bless, but we don't meet 
the condition. Mm. Uh-huh. Some of us, we pray and we think that, well, well I, all I can do is just, I mumble inside, I don't say anything. There are times you got to speak out. As God, as, as God spoke and there it was, as Genesis declare, then he's waiting for you and I who've been given the same right and privilege to speak some things so that we can have them. Some of us are playing that we're playing like we're the secret agent. Oh, no, you're not secret agent. God wants you to know you are walking in the blessings of God if you meet the condition. Mm. We all quote John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him will not perish but have an everlasting life. Now, I need you to know who does everlasting life go to? Who meets the condition? Who have received the son. So it's not because somebody holds up John 3.16 at a football game and we think that means that they everybody's receiving. No, whoever has received the son, they are the ones that have life, and that life is in his son. And so those who have received met the condition, I promise eternal life. You see, I know we don't get a whole lot of preaching like this because I know some of us think that as long as we all get together and we can all sing kubaya, we can have what God says. You can fool yourself if you don't meet the condition. Have you noticed the condition is if you don't repent, then you can't be forgiven? Have you noticed condition that if you forgive not men, brothers, their, their stuff against you, will you expect your heavenly father to forgive you? If you don't meet the condition, how is it that you think God will continue to bless? So in other words, when God brings this new revelation, he's bringing us to a now a place that it should bring transformation. You see, the word of God is quick and it's powerful. And so the word of God tells us in Hebrews that be not conformed to this, be ye transformed by the renewing of the mind. If you want the things of God, then you must meet the condition. Tell your neighbor, you need to meet the condition. You see, 1 Timothy 4 verses 1 through 8, begins to declare that the crown of righteousness is not given to anyone. Oh, Pastor DeBro, I need you to know the crown of righteousness is given to those of us who proclaim the gospel continuously and we don't fall. We are continuously preaching the gospel. That's who the crown of righteousness is for. So when other people don't meet the condition, I need you to know why are you looking for the blessing? Oh, you got to meet the condition. So whenever God brings you the promise of something he's going to do, sometimes you have to understand is there a condition that's required. When we actually deal with our money, you know the condition, what it says? Give, and it shall be given unto you. So why do you expect God to bless you if you don't meet the condition of giving? Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, come on now. Y'all don't want me to walk down here. You see, you see, well, my God shall supply my needs. Yes, but let me let you know. He says, for with the same measure that you give, so shall be measured back unto you. So how do you expect him to open up the windows of heaven and pour out the blessing if you don't, that you won't have room enough to receive if you won't even open up your hands? You don't open up your hands and expect him to open up the windows? Come on now. Meet the condition. Meet the condition. Uh, so, so when we meet the condition, we'll find out here in Matthew chapter 4, we understand that God has spoken a word. And every time when I'm talking about meeting the condition, you'll find the condition established in the word of God. So, so God has spoken a word. This word is, so, is such a word that when God speaks a word like that, you need to know that word is going to be tested. I, if too many folks to tell me, God told me we're going to be doing this. God told me that, that I'm going to be, and God, you know, everything that you're telling me, God is saying, okay, I believe you, but I tell you what, do you believe it? Because you need to understand when God speaks a word, that word is going to be tested. Uh-huh. Too many think, many of us think it's going to happen simply because God said it. No, no, no. There's some things that will hinder the word from coming forth in your life and mine simply because can you go through the test? Can you go through the test? You see, the moment that God speaks a word, warfare begins to ensue at another level. God has given you a word, something he's going to do, how he's going to change your life, how he's going to enlarge your coast, 
how he's going to do some things. And some of us, we're so happy that we go tell everybody about what God told me. Let me tell you what God told me. You better watch who you're telling your stuff to. Uh-huh. Because everybody's smiling in your face all the time trying to take your place. Uh, you already know. <laughs> uh -huh. So you got to understand some stuff. You remember the story of Joseph and Jesus? Genesis 39, we'll find out that, that Joseph told his brothers he had a dream. God told God, show him that it, they were all out in the field gathering the stalks of wheat. And, and, and his brothers' stacks all bowed down to Joseph. Now I need you to know something. Sometimes we don't realize that God gives you wisdom. Sometimes you need to keep your mouth shut. He told it to his brothers. And they, that when you know your brothers, that envy, they're envying you from the beginning. Why are you keep pouring more oil or gasoline on the fire? If they don't like you from the beginning, what makes they going to like you if you keep sharing more and more about what God done told you? So he said, that won't enough. You got to remember Joseph was a teenager. Y'all know them teenager years. Some of us, we still like teenagers. We ready to run and tell everything. And, and so here it is that Joseph told his brothers, and then God gave him a second dream. And he shared that all the stars in heaven and, and all this, and, and included his mama and daddy up in this situation. And daddy, you mean to tell me we're going to bow down to you? You see, sometimes God can tell you something, give you a dream about what he wants to do, and it is so powerful, it's so life-changing, it, it is so, and you're ready to share it, but sometimes you got to keep it to you. Mm. So we all know the story. The brothers found a way to sell him into slavery. And then when it looked like the dream was killed or destroyed or it wouldn't happen, God got a way of bringing it to pass. You see, I need you to know, delayed don't mean denied. Uh, you need to understand some stuff. Because it don't happen right now, because it's delayed, don't mean it won't happen. And sometimes it is in the waiting process that we begin to fall to the trial. Oh, in the waiting process. So Satan came to Jesus in three different ways. Uh-huh. You see, up to this point, the Father had, you got to understand, the Father just declared Jesus in chapter 3 at the baptism. It says, and here was Jesus led up. Uh, uh, follow the of spirit rather into to be in the tempted the wilderness to be tempted. That was in chapter four, but chapter three before this happened. Here came Jesus to John and said, Baptize me. John says, I'm not even worthy to untie your shoes. Jesus said, Suffered to be so. And immediately when Jesus went down into the water, the scripture declares, and as he came up, there was a voice from heaven that says, This is my son. You see, up to that time, you're probably wondering, well, who is he? But the voice from heaven said, this is my son. Uh, I know that's Mary's boy, and it's kind of questionable where Joseph is in the situation. But the voice from heaven declared, this is my son. Let me clear it up for you, just in case you didn't get the memo, just in case the text didn't come to you. I need you to know, God says, this is my son. And when he declared that, he declared ownership. What has God declared about as the sons and daughters of righteousness. Are you not his? Oh, hallelujah. And it was there, it was there that the father says, this is my son. You see, here, a whole revelation has just taken place. It is here. You see, up to this point where, where I'm not sure where I fit in the midst, up, up to this point, I'm not sure. God has received me. At this point, I'm not sure if God has forgiven me of my sins. But when you hear the revelation that you are mine, you've been bought with a price, you're not your own. Oh, you got to understand, I belong to God. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Oh, hallelujah. Mm. So here comes the trial. Oh, you see, if Jesus had failed in any of these tests, he will have nullified the plan of God. Why am I telling you that? Because there are times that God will speak something in your life, and if you fail at it, you nullify what he's trying to bring to pass. 
there are some promises that he gave for you, and I told you they were conditional. And at this point, there were some of us, we, at, when the, in the midst of trial, we ready to let the word of God go because we're now dealing with how we feel or what we think. And as a result, we can mess up what God has for us. Let me, why is the devil fighting you? Because every battle is over something. You better understand. He's not just fighting you because you look so good or you're so smart or you're so athletic or you so this and that. That's not what he's fighting you over. He's fighting you because there is something that each battle is over. Let me tell you why this battle is important. Because what was he fighting Jesus over? He was fighting him over the word. Oh, you see, when God speaks a word in your life, the enemy comes to fight you over that word. Let me ask you. Do you believe what he said, what he said, what he said to you? Do you believe it? You see, the battle is over the word. Oh, too many of us don't even realize that devil comes to fight us over the word. You see, it is here at this point. We know that Ephesians 6, 12 declares, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, rulers of darkness in high places. Why are they coming in? Could it be that they're coming in because they're trying to hinder and stop what word God has given you? He's fighting you over the word. Jesus has just heard a fresh word at the end of Matthew chapter 3. What was that word? Thou art my son, in whom I'm well pleased. Uh, Y'all remember when you gave your life to the Lord? You remember how you felt excited? I'm a child of God, and, and, and I'm on fire for the Lord. And, and, and you remember the excitement and the exuberance. But then there may have been times that some things begin to happen, and you begin to lose the excitement and the exuberance. What happened to the word that you heard? You see, the enemy is ready to fight you over the revelation of who you now are. Is that what he says in 1 Peter, that you are now a royal priesthood, a chosen generation. You are, uh, you know, you are the, the, the peculiar people. The word that God is telling you is that you're not like everybody else. So if you understand by revelation you're not like everybody else, why are you continuing trying to be like everybody else? Oh, hallelujah. I never understood it, and y'all forgive me, but I just can't understand how we got grown men up here with their pants below the hind parts thinking it's cool. I just don't understand what this is all about. But the thing about it, you got that when God gives you a word, you begin to, your life begins to change, and you begin to model after the things of God. Notice the word of God, what it says in Proverbs, where there is no vision, people perish. In other words, there, when you have an understanding of who you are in Christ, it will now shape what you say, what you do, how you act, where you go, how you present yourself. When you have a vision of who you are as a child of God, you think about it. You need to stick your chest out and say, a royal priesthood. Hallelujah. Oh, I am a royal. That means that I, oh, you, you, look, you see, while you're talking about me, you don't realize I am a priest of the Most High God. You got to look like, I may not look like it right now, but I got on royal robes. I, I got on the crown uh, at this point. I am the redeemed of the Lord. I'm called, I'm elect, I'm chosen. I'm the apple of his eye. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Why are you acting like you don't know who you are? You better act like you know. Oh, mm. oh hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, this battle is over the word. Because just as soon as we, when I look at this, Matthew 13 talks about the sower. The sower sowed seed, and some of that seed, when it hit the ground, the birds came and ate it up. And then it says that seed that was sown is the word. In other words, just as soon as you hear the word, the enemy comes to steal it. You got to let this word be planted deep in your heart, in your mind, in your spirit, that it will bring forth a peaceable fruit of righteousness. So when the word is so deep in you, then it doesn't matter what you call me. It doesn't even matter how you treat me because I can tell you I know who I am and whose I am will defend me. For my God <laughs> said, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. See, when you act 
You know, when you know that the power that is resident in you, Luke 10, 19, behold, I give unto you power to tread over scorpions and over serpents and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Let me tell you, church, in case you didn't realize, even if you're going through something right now, you need to know you're going to come out, the, out of this because in the end, you're going to win. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Uh-huh. So why are you up here all downcast and all moping around? Somebody just needs to get happy. Somebody needs to just praise God. Because even though it is growing against me right now, in the end, I win. Tell your neighbor, in the end, I win. In the end, I win. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. So revelation, when revelation comes, it raises up the level of intensity of the battle that you're in. You see, I need you to know that God has provided everything that we need, everything that pertains to life and godliness. God has already provided. So why are you lacking anything? Could it be that you didn't meet the condition of asking? Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. My people perish for lack of knowledge. Uh-huh. So I need you to know out of the abundance of your heart, the mouth speaks. So you need to find out what's inside of you. Uh-huh. Could it be that you're doing more damage to yourself by letting negative things come out of your mouth? You need to close up your mouth and begin to declare, I will not speak negativity. How many of us are speaking negativity control concerning our own life? What's going on with you? They try to kill me. Don't you start speaking death to yourself. Uh-huh. You got to say, I'm above and not beneath. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm the lender, not the borrower. Uh-huh. You say, well, do you have any money? Even if I don't have money in my pocket, I need you to know. I'm still what God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I have what God says I have. Why? Because I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Uh, you still ain't got your chest stuck out right now knowing who you are? Uh-huh. I'm going to pick, pick it up. Pick, pick it up. All right. <laughs> You have to understand who you are. Understand who you are. See, this war is over the word. God is giving you a word, and the enemy is fighting you over that word. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Some of us need to ask, open up my eyes that I can see. Uh -huh. Open up my eyes that I can see the activity. You see, there are times that you can sense the enemy coming from a mile down the road. Why are you going to wait till he gets in your presence to rebuke him? Oh, no, I'm rebuking him when I first sense him. Don't even try to come up in here, in here. Uh -huh. You see, I ain't going to wait till the argument and everything come. Don't you know the word of God says, and through every temptation, God makes a way of escape. Why are you going to wait till the stuff go down? What happened? Girl, they were shooting bullets. I was all under the table. I didn't know if I was going to make That may sound good at one point, but let me tell you, God has not called you to live like that. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So anytime the word comes, anytime the word comes and the word becomes flesh with you, it becomes a rhema word with you. In other words, something begins to connect with that word inside of you, and, and, it will, and it catches you, and you say, I can't let go. He got a hold on me, and I can't let go. Even though I'm going down, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, hallelujah. I can't let it go. I can't let it go. But you're going through some hard circumstances. Yes, I am. But I still can't go of God's unchanging hand. Mm. You see, when you understand that the word is a seed, and that seed will bring forth a crop if you allow it to be planted in good ground. You can't plant this seed in, in, in conditions about doubt or fear or unbelief. You can't allow this word a good word to be planted in that kind of field. You need God to break up this fallow ground. I uh, break it up, plant that word deep in me, regardless of what happens to me. Like Job said, though you slay me, yet will I praise you. Oh, hallelujah. You see, somebody need a yet praise going on. Yet, even though I'm going through, yet though it's not feeling good, yet though I'm hurting, I need a yet praise even when I don't understand. A yet praise, knowing it ain't over yet. Oh, hallelujah. 
Oh, hallelujah. Uh-huh. Let me tell you the second thing this battle is over. It's not only over the word of God. This battle is also happening to you over the will of God. Oh, you see, God has shared with you his will for your life. What God desires to do. Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, the Lord. Thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. Oh, and it says, and they who call on me, they will find me when they seek me with their whole heart. You see, God has given you a word, but until you meet the condition, what's the condition? Seeking him in it with my whole heart. Uh -huh. How many of us are so half-hearted with our relationship with God? It, it, we just playing it by ear. God, I'll talk to you later because my football game on now. God, 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 God I, know, uh, I know I said I was going to pray first thing in the morning, but Lord, my feet hurt. Lord, my back hurt. I, I'll get back down to you. I'm going to do it later on. For you know it, the whole day done gone by, you ain't prayed except over the saying, God is great, God is good. Now I thank him for my food. I prayed today. Oh, no, you didn't. I need you to know this battle is over the word of God, but it's also over the will of God. What's the will of God? Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest be in good health, that thou mayest prosper and be in good health, even as thy soul prosper. Oh, the will of God is to bless you. The will of God is to ignite a whole new passion in you. The will of God is to use you. Do you think God just can choose somebody like me? I don't even have enough of what God wants to use. He said, I did not call many high-minded. I did not call people of credentials. I he says, I look, I'm even calling the lowly. Don't, don't have anything. God will use you if you meet the condition. Somebody said, it, God use me. Mm. Mm. Uh, you see, you see, it's over the will of God. Uh -huh. What was the will of God? Satan took Jesus up to this place, over this high mountain, uh, uh, over the city. He says, look, I tell you what, since you quoted some scripture to me, I got some scripture too. Isn't that just like the devil? He knows just enough to get you all twisted in what God said. That's what he did with Eve in the garden. Did God say, uh, it, well, well, yeah. Uh, uh. In other words, you need to ask yourself, who are you listening to? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. See, it's here that we got to understand. This thing is over the will of God. So, so here, Satan took Jesus up to this high place. Over the city. He said, so the word says, to should be holy. If thou will just cast yourself down. See, sometimes we fall for the antics. We fall for all the showmanship. And I, I, I will. Uh, so many of us are lost in the emotion. You better let the word say what the word say. You don't need all the emotion or whatever. Let it speak for itself. And what it says, uh, he's quoting another psalm that uh, you won't even dash your foot against the stone. Uh, now, so you might say, well, that's what the word of God say. Now, that's enough for some of us to get in trouble. He said what the word say. She said what the word said. How many of y'all been led astray by people who said what the word said but didn't live according to what the word said? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, so, what, so what, was, uh, what was behind that response? Jesus knew that the Father's will for him See, it's over the will. So what is the Father's will for him? Now, think, Satan is saying, if you cast yourself down, all these people down here in the Temple Mount, they're here every day. So they'll see you falling off the top of the mountain. They'll see his angels come and raise you up, and they'll begin to applaud, and they'll begin to at the spectacle. Oh, look at that. But is that the will of God? The will of God is not that he'll be a celebrity. The will of God is that he'll be a servant, a suffering servant. You see, some of us, we get all out of the will of God. Why? Because we're trying to change the situation. We're trying to change uh, what we have to go through. Well, God, I, 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 I know, Lord, you want me to be a blessing to your people. So if you give me them six numbers, I'll take it to the seven, eleven. I, I bless the house. I, I'll get to the church. Lord, I, 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 will, I, I, you got all those eyes. And when it comes down to it, what do you do? Is that what God needs for you and I to do his will? You see, sometimes we get out of the will of God because we begin to be counterproductive. You know, every time that we know the will of God, the enemy always offers something else. Oh, uh, you say that, Lord, I, I want you to bless me with, 
uh, with a good mate, a good uh, a spouse. Uh, Lord, I want you to bless me with somebody, Lord, uh, who's going to meet all my needs. Uh-huh. Okay. And you know, you might say, well, I know the word of God says he, that he says to, uh, uh, it is not good for man to be alone. Uh-huh. But that don't mean you're running after every skirt that comes downtown. You got to understand what the will of God is. The will of God is that we will be chased, that we'll live godly kind of life, that we're not living a life where our reputation precedes us as being a negative thing. Girl, don't pay no mind to that man. He got eight cheering out here. He don't take care of none of them. And now you think because he's smiling and, and dipping in your presence. Well, you know, he's so cute. He's so fine. Yeah, I got... <laughs> You talk all that drama, but you got to understand what the will of God is for you. If you know that you're peculiar, if you know that you're out, if you know that you've been sanctified, then why would God bring you something that is entirely different? Uh-huh. Let me tell you how you some of us get out the will of God. The moment a man comes into the church and he's first time up in here, right, and the, the singles begin to put out, oh, I'm claiming he, by faith, that's my man. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm claiming him by faith. Mm -hmm. And so you done messed him up because he's trying to get his life straight and because you so hot on the trot. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. He can't even get right with God because he's got to gotta move through all the, everybody. I made you a cake, a chocolate cake. I hope you like, oh, look, I brought you this. You were on my mind. God just, <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. You done got that man who was on out of the will of God because you put something else in the way. Isn't that how the enemy does? When you're looking to serve God, the enemy always brings a counterfeit. He always brings a counterfeit. Uh, man, you sure enough looking tight. That. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and get matured in the things of God. Because later on, you come back to me, Pastor, uh, he don't even want to do this and do that. You knew he won't write when you got him because you didn't give him a chance to grow up in the Lord. Uh-huh. The scripture declares that no man comes to the Father not because the woman leads him, because the Spirit draws him. Let the Spirit do the work. Uh-huh. So when we're outside of the will of God, we'll begin to follow after anything to get us off track. You know how many people get out the will of God and they're doing any and everything? Uh, 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 you're just trying to get happy. You're trying to be satisfied. You're trying to, I, I just want to have time. I need you to know there are some times when you have to learn how to wait on the will of God. You see, I told you it's over the word, it's over, over the will, but you got to learn how to wait on it. You see, when you look at Daniel chapter 10, you're going to begin to find out that Daniel had prayed for an answer to prayer. And the scripture declares in Daniel, Chapter 10, that this answer was held up. Mm -hmm. Daniel 10, 13. The angel declares, I was sent to you from the very moment that you prayed. Mm -hmm. But I was held up by the prince of Persia. And Daniel prayed 21 days. Had Daniel stopped praying, then the will of God may not have been revealed to Daniel. But because Daniel knew that God wanted him to have an answer. He persevered despite what it looked like. You see, when you want the will of God to happen in your life, you got to take a licking and keep on ticking. You got to learn how to persevere and go through until the answer comes. Oh, you got how? You got too many 90-day wonders in the house of God. Uh -huh. There was a 90-day wonder. They get saved the day they get baptized next week. And with that, 90 days, oh, I'm deacon this. I'm trusty this. I'm this. You got many 90-day wonders. And then what happens? The moment the trial comes, I did. Oh, they don't come to church no more. This don't happen. They done lost their relationship with God. Too many of us, you got to realize, you got to learn how to wait, I say, on the Lord. And he will give you the desires of your heart. Wait. I say on the Lord. You see, when the will of God is actually coming forth, the enemy got a way of transforming what God wants to do by offering a counterfeit. Can you recognize the counterfeit? What counterfeit things have happened in your life when you knew God had this for you, but for all of a sudden something else began to come up in the picture? Mm. Uh-huh. Lord, 
I was, uh, Pastor, I was walking all right. I was doing good. I was minding my own business. And then this thing came up in my life and got me up out of the church house. And, 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 and now he, 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 come on now. You got to recognize, hey, when it is a counterfeit. You see, the counterfeit, it always looks like the original. You see, sometimes you can hold a counterfeit dollar bill against a real dollar. And the only way to look at and know what's counterfeit, compare with the real. Too many folks in the house may look like they're real, but you better start comparing with what is real. Well, what's real? Am I comparing them with me? No, I'm comparing them with the word. With the word. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the angel says, from the very moment that you prayed, I was sent as an answer. God wanted you to know the answer. It was the will of God that you would know the answer. But so, because you kept on praying, Michael had to be dispatched. And Michael began to bring war against the Prince of Persia. And then I was released to come and give you the answer. You see, sometimes the will of a God is, is actually held up because we're not praying the way we need to pray that the will of God will come to pass. You see, because God gave you the word and you know it's God's will that you have this, how is it that you and I give up so fast? Oh, how many? Can we, can we raise our hands? Anybody just, you just walked out of the blessing of God because you weren't willing to wait on it? Uh -huh. uh, you, you couldn't understand it. It was getting too hard. You got tired of going through. So you, you and, and if, I, 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 okay, I want to make sure, okay, I want to make sure I ain't the only one. Uh -huh. I know misery likes company, but if I'm singing this song, I'll sing it by myself. Yeah, I've messed up many times. But I tell you what, it's one thing that after you messed up is another thing of getting it right with God and getting back in his will. Oh, will. Uh-huh. That's why Romans 8 and 37 tells you, you are more than conquerors through him who loved you. Uh-huh. So, so why are we continually giving ourselves over to something that we know is wrong? Can it be that you now are tempting God and now you're wondering why it won't come to pass? Why it's being held up? You see, I like Philippians 1 and 6. It declares that he who began a good work in you. It's faithful to complete it. In other words, because I didn't got out of his will don't mean God gives up the plan. Tell your neighbor, I'm glad he don't give up the plan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So he's faithful. He's still looking to bring us into the very thing that he promised. And so, and so he's bringing us back into his will. Mm-hmm. It is, it is, when do I get out the will? I get out the will when I'm most vulnerable. It's when I'm weak. When I'm weak, I get out of the will of God. I tell I got to have something. I need something. I can't be like this. And at that point, you are about to walk out the will of God because you're allowing your emotions, your feelings, your thoughts, and everything to rob you of the truthfulness of God's word. Is it, does Numbers 23, 19, does he say, I'm not a man that I should lie? Have I not said it? Will I not bring it to pass? Then why are you now contemplating doing something that would take you out of the will of God when you know God's plan for you? Yeah, it's to bless you. Oh, hallelujah. I like Isaiah 55. He says that my word will not return unto me until it has accomplished the thing I sent it out to do. So in other words, I need to stand on the word of God and remain in the will of God. Tell your neighbor, don't you mess up. You're closer than what you thought. Mm. Mm. You see, all it does is take the enemy to begin to turn up the fire a little bit. We done left the word. We done left out of the will. And we wonder now, why how did we destroy our lives? You see, this is how you got to understand the battle. Understanding the battle is that the enemy is not just fighting you because you're because you trying to maintain a testimony. The enemy is fighting you because he knows it is God's will to bless you, to use you, to prosper you. Oh, hallelujah. Let me tell you the third thing that this battle is over. I told you it's over the word of God. I told you it's over the will of God. Let me tell you the third area is over with. This battle is over the worship of God. Satan took Jesus up to the high mountain. He says, if thou wilt bow down thyself and worship me, then I will give you all these kingdoms that I've shown you. You see, the devil, the devil never declares to you and I outright bow down and worship us, but do you realize that's really what he wants? He wants to be worshipped. 
Is that why he was kicked out of heaven, Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28? Do they not declare that he says, I'm going to be like the most high God? I'm going to sit in the mountain on the side of the north. I'm going to be worshipped just like him. Does, does all of this begin to happen that he wants to worship, be worshipped? Why? Because he is prideful. Now, you want to know how you get out of the will of God? Allow pride to come in. Why do you think he says pride goes before the law? That's why Satan had to be kicked out. That's why Jesus said in Luke 10, 17, Satan being cast, cast out of heaven like lightning falling into the earth. Do you realize Jesus was there and he says, I saw Satan being kicked out. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, so this battle is over. Your worship. Let me ask you, what are you worshiping? Who are you worshiping? Some of us putting people above God. I'll do whatever, whatever it's going to take for me to have him. I'll do whatever. You have now put another God in front of God, and God says in, 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 in Deuteronomy, I am the Lord thy God, thou shalt have no other gods before me. You mean that person you running after with is going to cause you to lose out on what God has for you, and you put them above God? What is your worship over? Hmm. Some of us, we got to worship over our, our money. When my money is funny, I start acting crazy. Uh-huh. Let me ask you something. What will it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Mm-hmm. What are you worshiping? Let me ask you like I asked you last week. What's in your wallet? You see, you got to understand, too many of us are worshiping our titles, our positions. We're worshiping the fact that people know us. It's like cheers. Everybody knows my name. Uh, you got to come a time that when you look at what is it that aspires you to move at another level, and when it is, does it compete with God in your life? Mm. You see, sometimes we get so busy. Why? Because we want everybody to need us. I know I told God I was going to do this and I'm going to do that. But I'm running here to help so-and-so. I'm over here to help this. I'm back here doing this for these people. And I'm, you can find yourself getting so busy with everything else. When do you have time to worship God? Oh, the singer's over your worship. God says, wait a minute, I need you to know something. I am the Lord thy God. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Who do you have before God? Hmm. You say, he said, well, no other gods. Uh, I don't have no God before him. Well, let me ask you. You see, those things that you put before him, those things that you do before him, those things that have more attention than him, those things that draw you continuously more than him, I can tell you that's your God. Mm -hmm. Some of us made our children our God. Uh, you live your whole life around your children. Your children are your God, and you better realize you better knock this thing back down. Oh, no, my God is first. Matthew 6, seek ye first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, all these things shall be added. Now, what have you put before God? In other words, what are you worshiping? Uh-huh. I can't stop myself every time this, every time I see, every, uh, so in other words, you have put this before God. How is it that you know the will of God, but you're still planning to do evil? Oh, Lord. There is no temptation that's overtaking you, but such is in common to man. But God will, with every temptation, make a way of escape that you don't have to bear it. In other words, you already know the will of God. And God is working even in the midst of the temptation that you don't fall by making the way of escape. Sometimes you need somebody to get up in your face and say, you're wrong. No, you can't handle it. You want to be liked by everybody. You want everybody to agree with you. But sometimes you need somebody to tell you to your face, you're wrong. Uh-huh. And if you do, and, and let me tell you, before they can tell you to your face, you need to be able to look at your own self and say, I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. What is this worship over? Is this worship as the devil wants to rise up to a high place and a high position? Is that what we want? We want to rise up and we want to feel important. We want to rise higher than our predicament. We want everybody to know, look at me, look at me. I made it through, look at me. Is that what you want? You want worship? The only one who's worthy of worship is God. Mm -hmm. So Jesus said, so the devil says, bow down. Mm -hmm. Fall down and worship me. In other words, give up your right, your privilege to walk with God. Uh, 
I'm going to show you something else I can give you. You realize how much the enemy throws a counterfeit in your life and mine just to get us, to get out of God's will and plan because he begins to know we're worshiping something else. Mm. How many times have we, that you unknowingly didn't realize you worship something else more than you worship God and it got you out of God's plan? This morning, as we are beginning to wrap this up, I need you to know Daniel chapter 7, verse 25 declares that the enemy, he makes war with the saints to wear them down. In other words, the enemy will keep back and back and back and back to wear you down so you cannot fight him in this area. What is the area in your life? What is it that he keeps coming back at? You see, where's this battleground? Right now, it's in your mind. And he's bringing the same set of thoughts over and over. Could it be about sex? Could it be about money? Could it be about pride? Could it be about envy, jealousy? Could it be about having your own way? Whatever it may be. Every day, constantly, the enemy is throwing this at you. It began to use the things that he has designed against you and throwing right back at your face. Uh-huh. You think God going to answer you after you done did such and such? You remember how you talked to so-and-so? You remember how you, uh-huh. I know you a titled person in the church, and you still got a cussing ministry. I need you to know something. The enemy will still use that against you. Why? That's why, the, that's why Jesus says, give no place. Uh-huh. You got to learn how to give no place for him. The moment he comes up, remember, he's coming for a, per, a person, a, a particular purpose, rather. He's coming to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus says, hey, I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. This morning, if any of you are in a battle, I need you to understand what this battle is all over. It's over the fact that you know the word of God. God has given you a word. And now the battle is raging because now the enemy is trying to keep you out of the will of God. And lastly, He's trying to draw you to worship something else more than God. I need you to know God does inhabit the praises of his people. There are some times when you're going through, you need to just start praising God. Stop singing them old sad, dry songs that don't take you nowhere. You want to get into worship. Even what uh, the word of God says, the spirit makes uh, intercession for our utterances and groanings that we Stand. Right, you're going through anything, it's okay. You just, mm, mm. Uh, shut that. Bah, 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 bah. The Holy Spirit knows what it is. Mm, better yet, bah, 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 bah. the worship, the will of God, the word of God. God, I need your word to be crystal clear in my life that I quit. About I want to stay in the midst of your will. Lord, let me not move to the right or to the left. I want to remain in your will, Lord God. Lord, help me to stay, Lord God. In Search me and try me and see if there be any evil thing in me. Lead me to the way that leads to life everlasting. Oh, hallelujah. Lord God, I want your will resident in my life. Create in me a clean heart. Renew that right spirit in me. Oh, Father, I worship you. I don't just worship you with songs. I don't just worship you with my hand. My life, I am yours. I give all of me, Lord. I give it all to you. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. I'm yours. Have your way, Lord God. Have your way, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Shit, did it. Hallelujah, have your way, Lord God. 
Make your word known. Oh, no, 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 no. Let your will be known, Lord God. And Lord, I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Hallelujah. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Oh, Lord, I give myself away so you can use me. Here I am. Here. Stay, Lord, my life is in your hand. All my dream all my plans Lord I place them in your hands I give myself away I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. My life is not my own. You I belong. I give myself I give myself to you. 